As long as I live, no matter how far I go from the scene of it, I shall never forget how it started. In those days, I lived in Coin Street near Waterloo Bridge. I had a strange feeling that someone was watching our lodging house. I was working in the chorus at the Cambridge Theatre, and several nights when I came home late, I caught a glimpse of a figure lurking in the shadows. Of course, at that time, I had no idea of the connection between this stranger and my friend Daisy Arrow. Dear, not answering. I, I didn't know it was you. I say, you left your blind up. Don't do that. Blimey, you are in a stew. Sorry, Belle. I'm rather jumpy. Oh, is it, Daisy? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, come on, you can tell me. Well, have it your own way. Is he rich? Please, Belle. I just popped in to ask you something, because you've got such good taste. There's a sale of feather boas tomorrow at Obbs and Son at Waterloo Road. I thought if I could go in there in the morning before rehearsal, maybe you could come down and... You have to excuse me, Belle. I have a dreadful headache. I'm sorry, dear. Can I make you a cup of tea? No, thanks. Right, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Night. Good night. Daisy's odd behavior made no impression on me whatever. By the next morning at rehearsal, I had forgotten all about it. Where's Belladere? Belladere! Where is she? I can't find her! If she's late, once more, just once more, out she goes! Come on, stay. Oh, Mr. Father Girl, I'm that sorry, and I was here all the time. I hadn't the faintest idea you wanted me. You hadn't the faintest idea? Well, get in line and take it from the chorus. And make it lively. Are you ready? One, two. Alf? Yes, Miss Daisy. Has anybody asked for me? No, not Chuck. And I hope you make it. You don't understand, Belle. Anyhow, good luck to you. You look ever so pretty. Daisy, me proud Irish beauty. How about a bit of supper? I can always eat, Georgie. Well. It was sweet of you to pay me cab fare this morning. <laughs> I'm a sweet man. I wish I could say the same for my landlord. He got very down of mind at about a nasty little one pound eight that he claimed is overdue. Mere yeah, bagatelle. Oh, it isn't that so much. The one pound eight's a drop in the bucket. But I was a week behind last month also. What's it to George Gilby, the long lost heir? I got a cab. Good night, Daisy. Good hunting. Look now, Daisy. In case your uh, gent shouldn't turn up, you're welcome to come along with me and Georgie. That's civil of you, Belle. But he'll be here. Miss Daisy Harrow. That's me. Do you mind if I have a peek at him? Don't be a fool. Hello. I was about to give you up. It just struck 12 on St. Paul's. What? I said it just struck 12 on St. Paul's. Get a peek at 
speak at Daisy's friend. I liked his voice. Sort of foreign like. I wonder where Daisy found him. Oh, probably some Italian or Portuguese prince. The town's crawling with him. Crown and bottle. Right off. Here's a fiver. How's that? Oh, thank you, Georgie. Of course, it's only a loan. You're so kind. Oh, I'm a blooming fool about you, Belle, and no mistake. Oh, no, please. The cabbie might see you. You weren't afraid he'd see me giving you that fiver. Not now, Georgie. We'll still be at my lodgings. Then you'll be afraid the landlord might no, see No, I won't, Georgie. Please, Georgie, I want to talk oh, to you. We can talk tomorrow. No, I want to ask your advice on something because you're such an intelligent man. Oh, what do you want my advice on? Georgie, how do you get to be a lady? What? How do you get to be a lady? How do you get to be a lady? You are a lady, Duck. No, I'm not. Not a real one. You feeling all right? Ain't got a fever? No, I'm serious, Georgie. It must be wonderful not to have to pretend. I mean, a lady's so sure of herself. The way she walks, the way she talks. I've watched them at the theater. The real ladies. You've only got to glance at them and you know that they are. Me now, tradespeople and servants, look down their noses at me. They know what I am. Yeah, now, Duck, enough of that talk. Lady or no lady, you're my cup of tea. Georgie, please. Georgie, please. Please, oh. Georgie. Daisy's home already. Oh, shall we give her a serenade? You keep quiet. Daisy's got a temper like a wildcat. Oh, how much? Better have him wait. Cabs are hard to find around here this late. Well, uh, I'll only be a jiffy. It's all the same to me, Governor. Oh, I must have left my gloves in the cab. Oh, I'll get it. I don't see any sign of him, Duck. to the police, Daisy had been drugged and then smothered or strangled. They questioned us for more than an hour and took samples of the tea that was left in our half-empty cup. Is this your Bible, too? Bible? Never saw it before. I... I don't think it was Daisy's. How do you know? Well, she wasn't much for baubles or flowers. Poor thing, they both are a great blessing. I don't know what I should do without my garden. It seems to be a well-grown moss rose. A moss rose? Why, I haven't seen one since I was a child. 
They don't mature well unless they have a very acid soil. I hope you haven't lost the place it was in, sir. Oh, good heavens, how careless of me. <laughs> but then I don't suppose it matters much. It might be very important, sir. It was on page 132, sir. How do you know? Well, I looked. Just before you came in. My mother always used to mark her place like that. Only she used a sprig of pennywort. When did you say you left the West Country? Oh, I didn't say, sir. But how could you tell that's where I'm from? Pennywort prefers to grow in the West Country. The moss rose is more capricious. One is apt to find it almost anywhere in England. Well, at least we can concentrate our search on England, eh, Evans? England is a pretty big place, sir. If we have to search all the gardens and all shires looking for moss roses... You wouldn't discover any. The moss rose is out of season now. Then where did this one come from? That is precisely what we must find out. Why would anybody want to murder Daisy Arrow? I kept asking myself over and over. And what had a moss rose pressed in the pages of a Bible to do with it? And what of the man I'd seen leaving Daisy's room? Somehow I had a feeling he was the same man I'd seen the night before in the cab at the theater. forgotten all about the cab and the white horse until then. Of course, in London, a white horse was no novelty. Yet there was always a chance it might be the one. Here you are. I kept a nice enough for you, Harry. Ah, oh, almost thought I wasn't going to get here. When up popped a fair that brought me right to your door. Hello, young Bell. There's been a basin full of bother up your way, I hear. And you'll be hearing more. Is that your cab outside? If you wait till I finish this nice dish of tripe, I'll be glad to go out and have a look. The one with the white horse, is that yours? Will you call him White Bert? Well, being a friend of both parties, I would not to give an opinion. I don't care what you call him. You took a gent from here about an hour ago, didn't you? Who says so? A dark foreign-looking gent in a grey hat and a light raglan. I've carried dark foreign-looking gents in grey hats. I've carried dark foreign-looking gents in light raglans. But I don't remember as if I've carried one as wore both. No, my dear, not if you gave me a stack of Bibles that I to kiss, one on top of the other, and me a gourd fearing man to boot. Where'd you take him? Oh. That gent. What gent? The one you took away from here. I don't remember saying I took anybody. Hey, but me lad, how about another half point? Help yourself. I'm busy. Why no? Now look here, mister. You tell me where you took that, Jack, and I'll buy you the half pint of bitter. I can buy me own, thank you. Now, look here. You take my advice and leave gents alone. They're not for the likes of you. You'll only borrow trouble, as you probably have already. The likes of me? Who do you think you're talking to? I knows a real gent when I sees one. And I knows you lasses that go fooling about where you don't belong. You keep your place and make them keep theirs. You'll be better off, mark my words. You know I'm no lady. Well, first place, you don't dress like one. Second place, you don't talk like one. Third place, you don't act like one. He's looking at you. I catches your eye. Where did you learn to say that? What? I catches your eye. Oh, um, my father always said it. Your father? Where did he drive a cab? He had a stand in Piccadilly. In Piccadilly? Why didn't you say so? What was his name? Pat Linton. Pat Linton? I never knew him, but I knew fellas are dead. Good friends of mine. He's dead now, eh? Paul asked, did that bloke in the cab do you wrong? That's my affair. Pat Linton's daughter. Will all be blowed. Now, the gent in question gave me a nice tip. But if you're Pat Linton's daughter, he paid me off in Hyde Park. Hyde Park? But that's a big park. Hold on. I picked up a fare on the bounce. And on the way back here to eat this lovely dish of tripe, who should I see going into the Regency Hotel? Him? Big as life. Grey at and all. Thanks. I'll do as much for you sometime. I catches your eye.
this way, milady. Oh, there he is. Hello, Michael. Mother. What in the world are you... Hello, Audrey. I, strange, I was just thinking of you. Where are you, darling? How are you? I'm extremely well. I, have you had lunch? You haven't even said you're surprised to see us. Surprised? As, as I told you, to be thinking of someone who's far away. And suddenly look up, and there she is. There's more to that than surprise. I thought you both were in the country. Did you just arrive? No, my dear. Last night. We inquired for you, but you were out. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't in. I, but uh, then I didn't know. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters except seeing you again. Isn't there a waiter in the whole of London? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. You'll leave with us tonight on the six o'clock train. I'm afraid I can't. Lady Margaret and I have got some shopping to do, but we could be ready by... I'm sorry, I can't go with you. Not tonight. But I want to leave as soon as I can. It would be good to be back in the country again. We can take long walks on the moor, like we used to, darling. You and Mother leave tonight. I promise to join you, well, as soon as I can. At Daisy's funeral, there were only a few girls from the theater. All through the ceremony, I kept thinking about the man in the white coat. I had a feeling he was somewhere near, watching us. We seem to meet in Norway's, don't we, Mr. Drago? Come in. They, uh, they certainly do you well here. I had a friend that lived here once, but he's gone to India. Jack Sinclair, do you know him? Well, aren't you going to offer a lady a chair? Who are you? My name's Bella Dare. What do you want? I live on the same floor as Daisy Arrow. I saw you coming out of her room Sunday morning. Don't you remember me? I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, yes, you have. I saw you when you called for Daisy at the stage door Saturday night. I was with her. You're mistaken. I've never heard of anybody by the name of Daisy Arrow. Cold one. You mustn't think nobody knows I've come here. Be kind enough to state your business and get out. I wasn't the only one that saw you at the stage door. I had a friend with me. He saw you plain as I did. You cheap little blackmail. We're not discussing blackmail, Mr. Drago. We're discussing murder. Murder? You mean you haven't even been curious enough to read about it in the paper? You can't scare me. You killed Daisy Arrow. I saw you that night, and I saw you coming out of her room Sunday morning. And what's more, the cabman that drove you to Hyde Park can identify you. In that case, why haven't you gone to the police? The inquiry is tomorrow. If you weren't more of a fool than a blackmailer, I'd go to the police myself and have you put away. 
I think our discussion is over, Miss... whatever your name is. You'll be sorry. It wasn't much I was going to ask. I'm asking you to go. That's not much either. You're making a very big mistake, Mr. Drago. Mr. Michael Drago, involved in murder, Daisy Arrow. Get him quick. As a rule, I don't bother with anonymous communications, Mr. Drago, but in murder cases, we're not permitted to use ordinary discretion. I understand, Inspector. And I appreciate the discretion you've shown in bringing me here. Not at all. And now, if you could give us a fairly accurate description of your movements during these intervals, Evans has it all worked out. Let me see. That night I dined with Major Jameson at his club. We played billiards until midnight. Then I walked up Piccadilly. I returned to my hotel, oh, about 12.45. Did the porter give you your key? Yes. Cigarette? Thank you. Then you retired for the night. Yes. And the next morning? Next morning. Thank you. That was Sunday. I got up around 10, and after having breakfast in the grill, I took a walk in Hyde Park until lunchtime. And where did you go for lunch? I came back to the Regency. <laughs> the Regency, I don't blame you. Excellent cuisine at the Regency. And now, just one more question, Mr. Drago. Your father was not a British subject, was he? No, he was not. I hope you don't mind my asking. Purely routine, you know. And you yourself have lived a good part of your life away from England. That is, in Canada? Yes. But your mother is English, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And the Drago estate is? Charnley Manor. That's in Devonshire, isn't it? Yes. Mr. Drago, would you be able to say if there's an arbor of moss roses at Charnley Manor? Moss roses? Yes. I, I'm not sure. It's quite possible, though. Our gardens have all the Devonshire flowers. Oh, I see you're interested in flowers, Mr. Drago. So am I, so am I. Floral geography is a hobby of mine. Look at these begonias. I raised them from seed. Evans? Yes, sir? Please ask Miss Adair to step into your room for a moment. Place her as close to the door as possible, so she can hear clearly, and at the same time not be able to see anyone in this room. Yes, sir. And also ask Mr. Stevens and Mr. Thompson to come in here. Yes, sir. By the way, you don't know Miss Adair, do you, Miss Belladere? No, I don't think so. Why, did she say she knows me? No, she didn't. I hate to trouble you with all this fault around Mr. Drago, but Miss Adair claims she saw the principal suspect in a cab when he called for the deceased at the Cambridge Theatre the night of the murder. She also heard him speak to the deceased. I never place much reliance in these voice tests, but this girl insists she can recognize the voice. So just for the sake of a clear record, I wonder if you'd mind submitting to a test. Why, you don't give me much choice. I have none myself, Mr. Drago. I don't doubt your word, but certain areas in your statement leave room for uh, reasonable conjecture, which I hope this voice test will eliminate. Come in.
Will you please read this aloud when I give you the word? And you do the same, Mr. Drago. Of course, it's all a lot of nonsense, but I'll try and get it over as quickly as possible. Evans, you stay with Miss Adair and take note of her reactions. Yes, sir. Come in, please, Mr. Adair. Sit there. Ready, sir? You're early. It just struck 12 on St. Paul's. You're early. It just struck 12 on St. Paul's. You're early. It just struck 12 on St. Paul's. They're terribly alike, aren't they? But it seemed that the second one... The second one, she said, although she wasn't absolutely positive. Well, Mr. Drago? Do you regard that as conclusive? I wouldn't say that, but it rather leaves us on the fence, so to speak. Actually, I'm duty-bound to include your name for further investigation. I'm sorry. I see. Inspector, how would it be if everyone said something different? Then perhaps they wouldn't sound so much alike, and we could secure a positive identification. Good man. You say something at random. You stick to the original sentence spoken by the suspect. And you, Mr. Drago, can say anything you like. Do you mind if I read a sentence from a letter I happen to have here? Splendid. An excellent suggestion, Evans. You're early. It just struck 12 on St. Paul. Seeking to untie one knot, we sometimes tangle the whole skein. On second thought, I have decided to reconsider your proposal and will be glad to discuss the question of terms at your earliest convenience. Well, which one? I, I'm still not completely certain. You switched them round me. That's about all I can say. Please follow me, Mr. Dad. Mr. Dare, have you ever seen this gentleman before? Well, Miss Adair? I his type isn't unfamiliar. What sort of an answer is that? Look here, Miss Adair, either you recognize him or you don't recognize him. Is this the man you saw coming out of that room? I wouldn't want to hurt an innocent person. Is this the man you saw coming out of Daisy Arrow's room the morning of the murder? Well, answer me, Miss Adair. Is he the man? I, I, I was that startled that I, I don't remember. That will be all for now, Miss Adair. When we need you again, we'll send for you. That will be all. Well, Inspector, any further need of me? Not at the moment, Mr. Drago. Not at the moment. Again, I regret you've been subjected to this inconvenience. After all, it's no small thing for a man of your prominence to be dragged into a mess of this sort, especially on the eve of your wedding. I'm sure you realize we're only doing our duty. I do, Inspector. And if there's anything else, I am only too happy to be of service to you. We'll keep in touch with you. The next morning, there was a note under my door telling me if I came to the Shaftesbury Gallery at three, I would learn something to my advantage. Catalogue, Miss? No, thank you. I'm just looking. Thank you. Life 
wife, Mark, isn't she? I suppose she was in the front row in her day. Mark Webb, times do change. I got your message. I came as soon as I could. It must be nice to have your picture painted. Look at all the admiration people pay you. Do you mind if I do my painting without admiration? I think you'll find this sufficient. Just a moment. The least I expected was a decent nod of gratitude. I thought it was money you were after. Very well, then. Thanks. It won't do. No, it will. Why not let's go somewhere and have a cup of tea, your highness? And have Inspector Cleaner see us together? How do you know they aren't on to you? Oh, I know they're not. Well, I am. I repeat, you'll be more than satisfied with what you have there. Thank you again, Mr. Dare. You're leaving now, Mr. Drago. Will you send my bill on to Charnley, please? Uh, certainly, sir. Oh, by the way, sir, a letter just came for you by messenger. Thank you. I find my plans have changed. I shan't be leaving tonight after all. Oh, very good, sir. Uh, take Mr. Drago's bags back to his room. <laughs> I'm glad you're staying on with us, sir. Good tab, Mr. Drago. Good evening. What's the meaning of your note? A woman has a right to change her mind, hasn't she? Wasn't the money I gave you enough? Oh, it was plenty. I wouldn't have asked for near so much. I don't understand how a girl like you can turn down 500 pounds. A girl like me? How do you know what I'm like? Just what do you want, Miss Adair? You shouldn't call me Miss Adair anymore. My real name's Rose Linton. Oh. You dropped your alias. Oh, it wasn't an alias. Belladere was my stage name. But I'm giving up the stage. I see. And what do you intend to do? Well, that depends on you. <laughs> on me? Yes. Now, look here. Why don't you call him? Concealing evidence is a crime, you know. But I don't want... What is on your mind? Apparently, you're convinced I'm guilty. Of course I am. Otherwise, why'd you try to buy me off? Because you could have made things even more difficult for me than they already are. You're still willing to bargain with me, aren't you? I made you an offer that was more than fair. You turned it down. Oh, it is money I want. It's something I want much more. Well? I found out from the portrait your hotel you're leaving London, going to Charnley Manor. Take me with you. What? Take me with you to Charnley Manor. Take you with me? Are you serious? I am. Of all the ridiculous... You don't understand. It's something I wanted all my life. When I was little, I lived with my dad in Shoreditch. You know what that's like? I don't think you do. My dad drove a cab and he wasn't owed much. I was left alone a lot. I, I, I had to make up games for myself. And the game I loved most was pretending I was a lady at a great house. Ever since I was that high, I dreamed about staying at a great house in the country. With butlers and 
footmen and maids. Breakfast in bed every morning. And if I wanted something, just ring for it. It'll only be for two weeks. That's all I'm asking. Let me go to Charnley Manor. Just for two weeks. But that's preposterous. No, it isn't. If you don't think for one moment you could get away with it, well, you'd be miserable. Just give me the chance. I'm sorry, but the whole thing is just too ridiculous. You won't do it? No. In that case, I suppose I'll have to go and call on Georgie. Georgie? George Kilby. He's the bookie chap what was with me the night Daisy got into your cab. Remember? So he's in this with you? Not yet, and he needn't be. Think it over, Mr. Drago. Think it over carefully. You know where to get in touch with me. Ta-ta! It's beautiful. You certainly had plenty of room to run round in when you were a little nipper. Look here. Do you have to look so unhappy? I? Happy as a lark. If you're worried about I'm going to behave while I'm here, put it out of your mind. You'll have no cause to be ashamed of me. Not with all these gorgeous new clothes you bought me. And as for me table manners, if I don't know which fork to use, I'll just keep me eye on you. My word, it's a regular palace. You should stop explaining my word at everything you see. I can't help it. Everything's so grand and green. The air smells so nice. And my word, how the sun shines. People in town don't know what they're missing. Everywhere you look, it's so lovely. You'd expect to see a calendar pasted under it. How are you, Craxton? Mr. Michael, it's good to have you home again, sir. Braxton, this is Miss Linton. She's stopping with us a few days. Your room is ready for you, miss. Thank you. I hope I shan't be too much bother. Nice little place you've got here, Michael. Is Mother home, Craxton? Her ladyship went for a drive with Miss Ashton, sir. We'll have tea in the library. Bring me a brand and soda, please. Yes, sir. How was I? Did you expect applause? I did it just like the Honorable Audrey would. Being a lady in a place like this ought to be no blooming trouble at all. No. Thank you, miss. But to bring her here, it's absolutely inexcusable. Aren't you taking it too seriously? Lady Margaret, how would you feel in my place? Oh, I don't think there's any cause for alarm. He wrote he'd got in some difficulty and she'd helped him out of it. Some difficulty? There was nothing in the letter to show that he had any real interest in the girl. But to bring her crashing in here just when we're about to get married. Oh, my dear, you know Michael. Oh, well, you should by now. Michael's just as he is. You have to take him or leave him. And I think you've made up your mind to take him. He inherited two things from his father. Good looks and the talent for making women unhappy. What can I do? I love him. Don't be all. Get along, Ginger. Hello, Michael. I didn't know you were here. Hello, Mother. Do you know, I've been trying out that new cob of yours, Michael. He's not as bad as he looks. I've never known anything to really satisfy you, Mother. Hmm. Mother, this is... I know who this is. How are you, Miss Linton? I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm glad to be here, Lady Margaret. It's good to see you again, darling. Dearest. Audrey, this is my friend, Rose Linton. How do you do? I understand you did Michael a great favor. Oh, I didn't do anything, really. According to Michael's letter, you did. And we're very glad to have you here. 
Now run up to your room and wash your face. My face? Is it dirty? That's not your own colour, is it? It certainly is. It's too good to be true. Turn round. Good head, good bones, nice confirmation. She has style, Michael. Real style. I'm not a horse. Now look here, young woman. If we have to put up with you, you have to put up with us. If I have anything to say about a person, I say it to their face. There's no beating about the bush in this house. And the sooner you learn that, the happier you'll be. Now come over here and pour me a cup of tea. Then we can have a nice chat. She has a bold way of looking at people that I like. Now let's have the truth about you and Rose. Is your feeling for a purely one of gratitude? Oh, come down, Mother. Rose is a beautiful creature, and I happen to know that's a formula that you simply can't resist. Audrey or no Audrey. Please, Lady Margaret. And you, what do you think of my son? Well, I hate to hurt a mother's feelings, but Michael's too wicked for me. He's too handsome, too much the lady killer to suit my taste. I wouldn't dare turn my back on him, and that's the quick of it. That's quick enough, and fair enough. Mm. Look at Michael, simply furious. <laughs> Can't say much for your tea, it tastes like rainwater. Oh, I dare say these two young things must want to be left alone. <laughs> Come along upstairs, I'll show you your room. It's on the next floor, has a very nice view. This is such a wonderful house. I went to the public library and looked up pictures of it. Mm. I'm really very fond of it. I don't wonder. You see, our families lived here for generations. We were all born here. Michael was born here. Here's your room, Rose. I hope you'll be comfortable. Oh, it's so nice. If there's anything you want, ring. Dinner's at eight. Thank you, Lady Margaret. I like you, Rose. Just What are you doing here? How dare you come into this room? I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Did I do something wrong? 
You're the first person who's been into this room, except myself, for a great many years. Is it the room of someone who's dead? It's Michael's room, when he was small. That's Michael's father. Looks just like him. He took Michael away from me. Took him to Canada. He was only a little boy then. Next time I saw him, he was a grown man. This room is just as it was when he left. I've kept it. His toys, everything, just as it was. Don't touch anything. I'm sorry. That's why I never let anyone in here. Even the servants. I knew when that little boy went away that day, he'd never come back. You come here every day? Every day. You think that's foolish, don't you? No. It's beautiful. All the same, I'd rather you didn't mention it to anyone. Anyone, even to Michael. He doesn't know? Nobody knows. But you now. I tell people I use this room as a store. The servants think I have a great treasure hidden here. I come to count it every day like a miser. They're not far off the mark, as usual. Let's go. I've made you uncomfortable, haven't I? No, Lady Margaret, you haven't. It's... Nonsense. Whenever I get sentimental, I'm a bore. Come along. I'm not sorry you saw the room. There's nothing like a small secret to bring two people closer together. I'll see you at dinner. Did I waken you? You frightened the wits out of me. I didn't want to knock in case you were asleep. I... I heard a shot. A farmer's child is lost on the moor. They're searching for her. She might have wandered into Charnley Ma. Charnley Ma? That would be the end of her. They'd never even find her body. Poor little thing. There's something I'd like to say to you. I suppose it is rather rude of me to come in at this hour. But I've got to know. Does Michael know you came to talk to me? So you call him Michael? Well, I... Doesn't everybody? Michael and I are to be married very soon. Nothing is to stand in the way of that. Do I make myself clear? Oh, quite clear. You have my best wishes for a long and happy life. You have a queer way of saying it. Queer? I mean every word of it. How long were you in the chorus at the Cambridge? While I was there, it was like forever. I suppose you knew Daisy Arrow. We worked side by side. We were good friends. It must have been dreadful for you. It was worse for Daisy. She loved living. 
I read about it in the papers. Why should anyone have wanted to murder her? Well, I asked myself the same question a thousand times. Is that what you wanted to talk to me about? Michael and I, we... I know. You're very much in love. Anybody can tell that. Yes. What I mean is... You and I can be friends. Or not. I... I want to be friends. You do? Truly? Of course. Good. That's what I had to know. I'm sorry if I disturbed you. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. As I look back now, it seems those days were the happiest of my life. And when Audrey went up to London to get her trousseau, Lady Margaret couldn't have been more kind had I been her own daughter. But the greatest change of all was in Michael. The moment Audrey left for London, it was as if some strange veil had been lifted. And he was completely another man. He taught me to ride. And Lady Margaret insisted that I wear one of Audrey's riding habits. Whenever I made little mistakes, or my manners were not what they should have been, Michael corrected me, but always gently and patiently. And never once did he mention London or the circumstances which had brought us together. You're not disappointed? Disappointed. Those dreams you told me about the night on Waterloo Bridge, is all this as wonderful as you thought it would be? More wonderful. Every minute's like something magic in a Christmas panto. Lady Margaret's been so kind, and you, you've been so decent. But I'm afraid I'll never understand you. You're not like you were in London. You're a different person altogether. I suppose there are things about this world of yours that I'd never understand, even if I stayed here for years. For example? Well, Audrey, she's in love with you. Anybody can see that. And almost anybody can see that you don't love her. Why are you marrying her? How can you marry someone you don't love? Sometimes marriages are arranged. Sometimes it's essential that they be. My mother's marriage was arranged. But your mother wasn't happy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I'm always putting my foot in it. It doesn't matter. You're not afraid of me, are you? Should I be? After all, our relationship is somewhat unusual. I'm in trouble, you know that. We'd best be going, or we shan't be in time to meet Audrey. She'll be on the four o'clock train. Here it is. I don't see it in the window. They say it's all the rage in London. We'd better be getting back. Lady Margaret said not to be light. Oh, I won't be a moment. 
Good afternoon. Miss Ashton. Have you that new novel of Mrs. Humphrey Ward's? Two copies came in yesterday, but they were sold immediately. It must be a saucy book. I'm expecting some more in a few days. Well, will you keep one for me? I will indeed, Miss Thank Ashton. Thank you. I'll have this. Suddenly. Strange, I had the occasion to mention your name today, Miss Ashton. Did you? You recall those three Bibles you bought? Yes. I just mentioned the fact to a couple of gentlemen from London who were making a survey on the sale of religious books. You told them I had bought three Bibles? I did, yes. I told them it was a healthy sign in a world of sin when one person buys three Bibles at one time. Will you send that for me? I will, Miss Ashton. Come, Rose. You won't forget about the other book. I'll put this aside for you, Miss Ashton. Good day. I beg your pardon, sir. There's an Inspector Clinner from Scotland Yard to see you, sir. Clinner? Yes, sir, and there's another man with him. Show them in, Craxton. Yes, my lady. Will you step this way, gentlemen? I think it'll be amusing to have tea with a couple of detectives. Good afternoon, Mr. Drago. Inspector. Sergeant. Mr. Drago. Mother, this is Inspector Clemmer and Sergeant Evans. You're just in time for tea, gentlemen. Or would you like something stronger? Neither, ma'am, thank you. I'm sorry to bother you like this, Mr. Drago, but it couldn't be avoided. We came to see you about your fiancée, Miss Ashton. Miss Ashton? What on earth could you want with her? Well, it's nothing of any consequence, I'm sure. We were just checking up on some loose ends in the Daisy Arrow case, and I thought you'd prefer us to discuss it with you instead of bothering the young lady. I don't know whether you recall, Mr. Drago, but a Bible was rather an important item in the Daisy Arrow case. Yes, but what does that to do with Miss Ashton? Well, I'll be brief as possible. This Bible, it seems, was published in rather a large edition. But in looking over the sales lists, I found that your local bookseller here in the village had purchased a dozen copies. Insomuch as you had been questioned in the case, we were naturally curious as to the disposition of those particular Bibles. I still don't see the connection with Miss Ashton. Miss Ashton bought three copies. Oh, I remember now. It was about the time Audrey came to stay with us. You see, she distributes a great many flowers at the hospitals, and occasionally some poor invalid asks for a Bible. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, that's precisely what I imagined. Speaking of flowers, I wonder if your ladyship... Do you know if Miss Ashton gave away all three copies of those Bibles? I can't be sure. I'm sorry we're so late. Darling, this is Mr. Clinton and Mr. Evans, some friends of mine from London who were just passing by. My fiancée, Miss Ashton. How do you do? Miss Ashton, how do you do? And this is Miss Linton, my companion. You'd better run along now. The dressmaker's been waiting for you for hours. Oh, dear, I forgot about the poor thing. Come, Rose. Well, it's late and we must be getting on. Oh, by the way, there's something I wanted to ask your ladyship. Yes. Well, that's curious. I seem to have completely forgotten it. Well, it couldn't be very important. Hmm. Oh, yes, I know what it was. <laughs> Flowers are a hobby with me. Your son mentioned that you had an arbor of moss roses here at Charnley Manor. May I see them? Even as an amateur horticulturist, you should know that moss roses are out of season. I know that, my lady. You think I'm a magician? I'm not. But my gardener is. I'd be glad to show them to you. That's most kind of you. Come along. Goodbye, Mr. Drago. I'm sorry to be such a constant nuisance. That's all right, Inspector. Come along, gentlemen. We'll be leaving for London on the afternoon train tomorrow. Meanwhile, we're at the inn in the village.
I dare say your ladyship knows the story of the origin of the moss rose. Do I? I'm not sure. Once upon a time, there was a princess who had great virtue and a kind heart. But the king, her father, was very miserly, so that all of her charities had to be done in secret. Well, as she was leaving the castle one day, carrying bread for the poor, the king accosted her and demanded to know what she had hidden in her apron. Roses, she replied. And when he snatched open her apron to see, the bread had indeed turned all to rose upon rose, just like these, moss roses. How lovely. You deserve a flower for that story. You must cut yourself one while I watch out for the gardener. He's furious when anyone touches them. Aren't you ashamed? What would you do if that rose under your coat should turn into a loaf of bread? from the stables. Why are you leaving? I want to know why. Because... Because I'm afraid. Afraid of what? I, I can't stay here another minute. There's a train for London at 5.30. But what's the reason for all this? Please, I, I can't tell you. You must tell me. me from the start. When did you get this? About 20 minutes ago. And you were not going to meet him? I couldn't. Why not? He'd have asked me questions that... that I... Questions that you couldn't answer because of me? Is that why you were running away? Look at me. This is the answer. You and I are the same kind, you know that. Yes. And whatever I've done... I don't care what you've done. Nothing matters now. You can't run away any more than I can. I've got to tell her. Tell who? Audrey. Audrey? That must be taken care of first. But you can't tell her. There's nothing else I can do. She loves you, Michael. She wouldn't give you up for Daisy. She'll never give you up for anyone. She'll have to. looking for you. You must be extremely pleased with yourself. Yes, I can tell that you are. You smug little hypocrite. What? I'm sure you think you've been frightfully clever. Well, it might interest you to know that I knew what you were doing all along. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, don't be naive. From the moment you blackmailed him into bringing you here, it's obvious what you were after. Michael has just told me. Told you what? Our marriage is postponed. That's the polite phrase the newspapers will use. But I'm sure my friends won't be so generous. I'm sorry, Audrey. Really, I am. Sorry? What a liar you are. This is exactly the way you planned it. All the time you were taking advantage of Lady Margaret's hospitality. And when I went to London to get my trousseau, you... I've done nothing to be ashamed. No. Perhaps people have no sense of shame in Shoreditch. That's where you came from, isn't it? You deliberately set out to break up our marriage. Did you fancy he'd marry you? What a high price to set on your affections. 
when I'm sure they could have been purchased in London for two shillings. I haven't finished. I've heard all I care to. There's just one flaw in your ambitious little design, one thing you overlooked. Coroner's inquest was an ordeal for all of us. The village doctor testified that Audrey had died from an overdose of sleeping powders, apparently self-administered. Traces of it were found in the teacup at her bedside. I told the truth and gave the best answers I could. Inspector Klinner did not appear at the inquest. And evidently, the local police place no significance on the presence of the Bible on the moss rose. When the inquest was over, the police held Michael for further questioning. And that night, Inspector Klinner sent for me. See if this telegram gets off as soon as possible. Yes, my lady. You're back. I just wired my solicitor in London to engage Sir John Harker. He's the cleverest counsel in England. Sit down, my dear. Tell me what happened. Let me have your hat. Did you see Michael? No. No. Inspector Kenner refused to let me see him. How impertinent of him. How daring. They're taking him up to London tonight. They can't hold him. Not after Sir John Harker gets on the case. We mustn't be depressed. He'll be back within 48 hours. I don't think so. What? Lady Margaret. I've got to tell you. Michael has confessed. Confess? Must be a mistake. No. Inspector Klinner told me. It's absurd. I think... Well, it's just a trick. It's just a police trick. Did you tell them anything? No. Good. Lady Margaret, what will they do to him? 
If anything should ever happen to him, I... You love him. I do. I should have known. Of course, I should have known all the time. I understand. I don't blame you for loving him. You can't help it. Here. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Lady Margaret, what are we going to do? I think you've taken all that you can stand today. Go along upstairs and rest. Oh, but I... But I couldn't sleep. You can try. Come along. <laughs> You'd better get ready for bed. I'll make you some tea. You haven't had a thing to eat all day. Neither have you. I'm just beginning to notice it. Shall we ring for Craxton to bring us some sandwiches? Tea will do for me, thank you. It is rather late to wake him up. I'll make do with a biscuit. <gasps> oh. What is it? I saw something moving on the... On the balcony. We'll soon find out. Hadn't we better call the servants? Nonsense. Nobody there. You must have seen a shadow from the trees. I'm sorry. I'm awfully jumpy. No wonder with all you've been through. so quiet. What? You haven't spoken a word for five minutes. All of a sudden I feel so sleepy. I can hardly keep my eyes open. Stop trying then. Come. Into bed with you, child. Good night. Good night. open the window a bit. Why? I can hardly get my breath. Do you ever pray? Yes, every night. It's more than Daisy Arrow or Audrey could say. My, my mother always. 
always made me wait. But I was too sleepy tonight. Did you say Daisy Arrow? What was the prayer she taught you? Who? Your mother. Now I lay me down to sleep. You, you did say Daisy Arrow, didn't you? Yes. That's as good as any other. Go on. If I should die before I wake. If I should die before I wake. You said Audrey, too. I pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. you found the others and I'll have my son back again all to myself mother 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 His boat! You fool! Clumsy fool! See what you've done! Meddling fool! It was his boat! His boat, I tell you! You've ruined it! You've ruined it! <laughs> and now I'm thousands of miles from Charnley Manor and London. The places and things I've known all my life. Lady Margaret is dead. But all of that is in the past. And there I must keep it. Come in. We'll be getting into Toronto in 15 minutes. If you'd like me to take care of your luggage or arrange for a carriage at the station for you, I'd be very glad to. No, thank you. There'll be someone meeting me. <laughs> 